will love you. Love is indeed a miraculous thing. It is a slingshot type of thing, love is. It propels us outside of ourselves and into the flow of God's very spirit. And love, it is powerful. It's powerful because there is an alchemy in love that can mysteriously and again miraculously turn fear into faith. Love can melt grudges into forgiveness, hatred into neighborliness, judgments into compassion, and anger into kindness. Love is the spiritual fuel, so to speak, that can propel us from where we are now into a more beautiful, peace-filled, and life-nurturing place. True, maybe all you need is love, but love is not easy, despite what the lyrics say. <laughs> love, I'm sure you know, can hurt. It is perhaps prophetic that we use the phrase falling in love to describe how it is when love comes into our lives. Because I don't know about you, but I do know for myself, when I am in the midst of falling, I don't look my best. In mid-fall, I may have one leg shooting up towards the sky. I may have one hand groping desperately behind me for a soft landing spot. The coffee that I invariably have in my other hand is shooting up into the sky, testing, indeed, the tenets of gravity. And my eyes bulge with anxiety, with the fear that my tight lips cannot express. It is not a pretty sight. Imagine a photograph of a person in mid-fall. It's a bit unsightly. Lost in a fall of this proportion is the facade of elegance and coolness of spirit. Lost is a sense of control and independence. Lost is one's usual perspective of up being up and down being down. Lost is knowing exactly what is going to come next. <laughs> that is why the phrase falling in love seems so appropriate because love changes our perspective. It turns us upside down. It signals that we are no longer in control. And what makes love truly miraculous is we don't care. We don't even want to be in control. When a spirit of love sweeps into us, into our hearts, we want to share, we want to take others' feelings and thoughts and ways of being to heart, and we're willing, when we are in love, to have those feelings and thoughts of others change the way that we normally think about things. <clears throat> no longer do we need to be masters of our own universe, but with love in our hearts, we're satisfied with being co-creators with those around us. And that is why love opens the doors to a whole new world for us. The doors to justice and healing, reconciliation and a shared joy which is far beyond an individual happiness. Because love takes us out of ourselves, places us in another shoe, and leads us to do things we would never, ever do in normal circumstances. And therein lays the power and the magic of love. But sometimes we are not open to the miracle of love. Sometimes we are not willing to follow or be inspired by to trust the movement of love's spirit because we all know that sometimes when we fall, even in love, it hurts. It hurts. 
Sometimes when we fall for love, we get bruised. Sometimes when we offer to share or when we make ourselves vulnerable to another or make sacrifices for others, all motivated out of the spirit of love. That offer, that vulnerability is thrown back in our face. And it hurts. Sometimes falling into the spirit of love, it breaks our heart. Sometimes it breaks our financial world or our ability to trust again. When this happens, what we often start to do is keep track. We start to keep track of the hurts that love has caused us. And when that happens, we start to keep score on how many times love has let us down. And in our pain, we swear to ourselves never to let ourselves be so vulnerable again to the sting of love. That happens in relationships, in partnerships, marriages. It happens among friends. It happens between groups within a larger community. It happens even between nations. It also happens in our relationship with God. If we reach out in faith towards God, if we do what is good and what Scripture tells us to do, and still, still we suffer, still we experience disappointment and pain, will we begin to get angry with God? We stop trusting God. And if that happens to you in your relationship with others or with God, remember these two things. First, you are part of this community, a community of faith and love. You do not journey ever into love alone, but you do so with our love and encouragement and support. Therefore, if you venture into love, fall short, and it looks like you're headed for a hard landing, we will catch you. We are the net beneath you when you step out on God's love. We will be there to dust you off if you fall, to tend to any wounds, to help heal your heart and revive your spirit. And we will uphold your dignity, no matter how silly you may look in the fall, for being a courageous, faithful person. The second thing to remember is this. Tennis has it right. Love is what you have in tennis before anyone starts winning or losing. Love is where you start. It's where you begin. It's where you are before all the scorekeeping starts. Therefore, if you want to experience the beauty and the grace of love, think back to tennis. You can't keep score. <coughs> Not in the game of love. You can't keep score of the hurts. Not even the wins. And certainly not the losses. The way to return to love is somewhere in your mind or if somewhere in your heart you have a scorecard for another person or for God is to throw it out. Just throw it out. And start over, because that's where love starts. That is what forgiveness is about. In Fellowship Hall, after the worship today, there are countless ways, countless ways to step out and into the Spirit of God. There are countless ways to love yourself by loving your neighbor. If you're a scientist among us, love is an exo Thermic reaction. <laughs> Exothermic reaction. That is, the exchange of energy that happens with love releases heat and it releases energy. It releases life for the whole system. Therefore, when you love your neighbor, not only does it change them, it changes you. Not only is it a gift for them, it is a gift for you. By loving another, you feel better. You become warmer in heart and more alive in spirit. That is the nature of love. It benefits 
everybody, the giver and the receiver. That is the hope. That is the power of love. Fall into it today. Don't worry about looking silly. Let love change you. Let it mold you, heal you, and lift you up and your neighbor into the arms of God. Amen.